Hi friends, it's me, Michelle, for Quimby Cottage Knits. Coming to you from our house in Southern Michigan, we have closed up the cottage for the winter. If you're new, welcome, I'm really glad you came. And if you are, if we're old friends, then I'm glad you're here as well. You can find me on Ravelry as MK Hansen, and you can find me on Instagram as Quimby Cottage. So, hi. It's a nice fall day here. It's a little bit brisk out, but windy. I enjoyed my walk today, so I'm glad to have that, and I'm glad to be back in this house. I didn't do a lot of knitting since we last talked because packing out the cottage is a lot of work. And then when you move in, the cottage is small and this house is big, but why do we have a bunch of stuff that doesn't have homes? I don't know. I just don't understand. So there's that drama, and we had to clean a lot. I had to evict a lot of spiders that thought they could move in here when I abandoned my house for six months. So there was that too. But now I'm back in a routine. Do you guys crave routine? I do. So I'm glad to be back in a mostly routine. Now I can talk to you about my knitting. So let's start with what I'm wearing. This is my Magnolia Chunky Cardigan by Camilla Bad. And I love it. I loved knitting it. It actually probably would have gone a little bit faster if I had not been living my other life in the middle of all of that, all of my out of routine things. I really like it. The cardigan, I chose to use Eco Wool, Cascade Eco Wool. I think it's Eco Wool Plus, actually. I liked the yarn. It comes in huge skeins, and it only took two to make this, and then I have this much left leftover, this much leftover. I haven't weighed it yet, but I'm hoping there's enough to make maybe a matching pair of mittens, but we'll see. It's two big walls of wool, and I think it's Peruvian wool, actually. Anyway, when I when I touch it like this and like this and like this, and like it feels fine, but I noticed on my arms it's a tiny bit itchy. Because this is a cardigan and I'm definitely wearing something underneath it, I still would choose this yarn again, but I wouldn't choose it for something close to skin. I I'm not allergic to wool, but I do sometimes have a sensitivity to some wools. I am allergic to alpaca. Sometimes I tough it out anyway. If it's especially nice alpaca, like the fiber company has baby alpaca in that road to China light. And I have a sweater in that. But even still, I wear a silk tank underneath that because I like to tempt the fates. There you go. So anyway, this is my Camilla cardigan. I'm sorry, that's a lie. This is my... Magnolia Chunky Cardigan. So let's dig in to this. First, I loved the knitting of it. I think it went pretty quickly. I did lengthen it a bit. I think I added three inches between the underarm hole and the hem before I started the lace pattern. It's top down. And I knew that I would want something a little bit longer. So I did that. I'm pleased with it. I did do shortish sleeves, which I like because, as I told you, I wear my sweaters and when I'm cleaning and cooking and what have you. So I wanted something I could just throw on that I didn't have to worry about. And I don't have to worry about keeping the sleeves pushed up or ruining them. It's exactly the layer of warmth that I need in a sturdy enough wool for me to be able to do the things that I normally do. So I'm pleased with the pattern choice. I'm pleased with the yarn choice. Let's talk about the buttons. The picture in the pattern shows a sweater with buttons, but it also shows sweater a sweater with these cute little crochet buttons. And I was like, that's what I want. Because let's be honest, I'm never going to button this sweater shut. I mean, why would I do that? That I don't, I, I'm never going to do it. It's just going to hang like this and it's fine. So I didn't even really necessarily need buttons, but I liked the look of it. So I decided to follow the directions and crochet the buttons. So let me find, so I have a bowl of buttons here, look, friends. So look, here they are. Aren't they cute? But look here, there's this one here. So look at, let me put these on. Look at this button. Isn't that just the best ever? I love it. So the pattern has you crochet and then do three rows. One, two, three, I'm pretty sure. A free pattern on Ravelry and then stuff it with a little bit of stuffing and then I left the tail on the other ones so that I could attach it. So I went ahead and made 10 of them because that's how many buttonholes I made and so I love it. So yeah 
I made 10 of these. And then I attached one, this one. And guess what I discovered? Look, friends. That's right. Here's my little tiny buttonhole. Let me do it from the side. Here's my little tiny buttonhole. And here is the giant button. <laughs> giant button that I made to go with it. So here's the thing. These were a little bit fussy to make. I can't decide if I should fuss with this and make 10 buttons again. Smaller. And then attach them. Well, first I would check to see if it would be smart. So I could maybe make this and, and leave off one of the rows and see if that would help. Maybe I could do that. I have to think about it. But I thought, of course, I'll just take some shortcuts and I will just find some buttons because my plan was that I wanted to make this and have it wearable this weekend. So I had it in my head that I was going to be able to wear it. So I wanted it to be done. So I have this button jar and this button jar. Do you think I have 10 buttons that will go on this? Two button jars. Maybe I could find 10 in this. There would be 10 that didn't match, but they would be 10 like cream colored ones and white. See that? These are mostly white buttons. The the dark ones that are in there, they're, they're metal. We should someday do a button show off, right? Because these metal buttons are gorgeous. Okay. They're too big and I probably don't have 10, but look at Aren't they cool? They're so regal. Okay, so I leave the metal ones in here too, but these are mostly white buttons. So I could look in here and see if I could maybe find 10 that are sort of alike. Should I do that or should I try to sew them? Or should I try to make new ones? You should tell me in the comments below what you think. So in the meantime, for button placement, when I make my cardigans, so I did not steam this yet. I do need to steam I did. I blocked the whole sweater, but I have not yet blocked the button bands. So I need to steam those a little bit. But what I do to show where I want them is I lay the button, I leave the sweater down flat, and then I put a safety pin, one of these removable safety pins, in the button hole, and then I, um, see there, and then I know where they go. So yeah, I'm not gonna button this. What am I talking about? Do I even need, I do need to add buttons. I need the buttons. I feel like I need them. I put holes on this side and I need them here for decoration. I need buttons. I need the buttons. So the question is, do I just do a bunch of mismatchy white buttons or do I try to finagle the crochet buttons and see what I can come up with? So make sure you tell me what you think. So there's that. That's. But I, I think I'm going to wear this a lot, actually. This is the second time I've worn it. I actually wore it before I put the button bands on. I had blocked it, and then it was laying over on top of a chair, and I was a little bit cold, so I put it on, and it still had some, I mean, it, it didn't have the button bands on it. I just wore it around a little bit, so I, I already like it. So if you don't have one, you should make one, too. And I will tell you that with this Cascade Eco Wool, it is, it was less than $50. I, well, maybe not. It might have been 60 But anyway, the yarn is less than $30. I think it was 20 something for a huge hank. It has 497, I think, yards on it. So it's, and I'm a larger size lady. So you could definitely do it with, with two, I would think, no matter what size. You may even be able to squeak away with just one. The point is, it's an affordable sweater. Well, that's kind of the only finished thing I have, but then I have, and it's actually not even finished. Let's be honest. I don't actually have anything finished. I'm in the progress of everything. So let's talk about that. The next thing I have is I finished one sock, only one, one sock of my scraps. For those of you who are new or don't remember, what I am doing is this is for cuffs, heels, and toes. Well, the ribbing on the cuffs. And then this is for, this is a, an opal colorway. And then this is, this is a blended colorway. This is Skin Cocaine, her special yarn, which I really love. So what I did was one strand of this and one strand of this, and I ended up with this scrappy sock. And look at how much do you love this fabric? 
If you look really carefully, you can see that this is where I did the color change. Sorry about that. I, apparently I tried to get a phone call. This is my iPad. I record on my, I am super janky with this podcast, not a professional. Sorry, this is a tangent now, but I will tell you, I've seen some people who really put a lot of thought into their podcast and they have little logos and stuff like that. I did not do that. I like structure, but this was pretty spontaneous. And I, I did get a microphone because after the first, so I have this little clip on microphone. After my first podcast, somebody said something about the sound and I thought, oh, that's something I can improve for sure. But the rest of this is just like a little hobby for me. I don't plan on it being anything more than that. I just like to talk to you about my knitting. And so I didn't really want to get into, I'm happy to learn a little bit of the software and the editing and stuff like that. because I do like to learn, but I don't have any plans to make this. Like this is not Christy Glass Knits here. It's a little bit more it's a lot more casual. So sorry about that or welcome, whichever one floats your boat. Anyway, back to my sock. So this is that sock and this is the side where I carried the yarn. You can see there's like a little, it's not, it's unblocked and there's a little bit of a blip there sort of, but I think that will go away when I block it. And this is what it looks like. Otherwise, if you look at it closely, you can sort of see how that opal sets a structure to the sock. You can sort of see the pattern of the opal in that. See that? But that special yarn that like from Skanko Paint, that is just breaks it all up. And I just really enjoyed making this fabric. So I think these might be for me. I tried them on. I think they fit me. They might be a little snug. I tried them on before I kitchened the toe. So we'll see if they're a little snug. They'll be a gift. I have a couple of people that I knit socks for whose feet are just a tiny bit tall, smaller than mine. And so they can go in a gift pile, which I don't want to say the C word, but it is coming. I do want to say the C word, not in a way that's pressured. Let's say that. Okay. Speaking of the C word. <laughs> so I wasn't really that excited to be making these buttons. Look, I have a whole bowl of these buttons. Look how cute they are. I mean, it's cute. And if I took these buttons, if I untethered this string here, they're just, it's cute. It's cute to have a little, like they would be cute little, maybe like decorations on a Christmas tree or like a little garland, or these would be super cute on the top of a tiny little baby hat. So cute. Or on the cuff of a mitten, maybe. Like, you know how sometimes on a cuff of a mitten, like right here, you'd put one or two maybe buttons and those would be cute for that spot. You could add them to a key ring if you want. They're, it's cute. It's cute, right? But they were a little fussy. And while I do like fussy knitting, for some reason, I don't like fussy crochet. Can I say that? Hmm. Let me just, let me backtrack. I'm not sure if I enjoy fussy. At the moment, I do not enjoy fussy crochet. Let's say that. So that's why I'm not for sure that I want to go back and do these smaller. Ten. I make 10 buttonholes. So there's that. But I did make these. Are you ready? I have a lot of them. So I have to drink a lot of champagne and wine. Actually, I don't drink wine, but Mr. Hansen does, thankfully, because I had to make these. And you, you have to have corks for them. And so unfortunately, you have to have a cocktail or you have to be friends with people who have cocktails so that you can get the base. But look at these cute little Christmas trees. So this one's cabled. Can you see the cable? This is not the best yarn for that. I could tuck this inside, but I didn't. And I'll show you why in a minute. So this pattern is called pint-sized pines. And I think they're super charming and fun. They take about 50 minutes, five zero minutes to make. You know, I like to time my fussy knitting. So these take about 50 minutes to make each one and they go pretty quickly and I really loved making them and they just pop right on the cork. So my plan though, they just go on it and they're fine and they stand up on their own. But I think in order, some of them fit a little snugger than others and I'm just using scraps and I'm just using scraps and I have three different sizes of needles that I'm working with. So I just make them depending however, and then they fit whatever cork they fit because of course the corks aren't all standard size necessarily. Some, the rubber ones are I think thinner and then some of these cork ones are a little bit bigger and then I even have some champagne corks. 
the chunky little things. But we'll go back to that in a second. But they stand up fine on their own and they just tuck on there. But I was worried that if I decided to make them ornaments and that they would hang, I feel like I should probably hot glue or something these trees to the cork. So I have to maybe figure that out. And then I was talking to Sarita Hansen, my daughter, and she said, if you put a little bit of hot glue at the bottom and then put it on some wax paper so that it doesn't stick, it will make sort of a little grippy sort of like for the surfaces. So they will stand up a little better, which I think might be a good idea to level them out a little bit. These corks are natural and so they're slightly rounded. And while they do all stand up on their own, sometimes when you walk by and like you kind of, or you fiddle with them a little bit, sometimes they, um, sometimes they sort of get a little tippy. So I think that that's a good, a good thing. And I will try that and we'll talk about it next time. Do you want to? So that's one. And I also made this one. So the pattern has two, two kinds of cables. There's this one, which isn't very easy to see. And then there's this cable. I don't know if this is easier for you to see. There's this cable. It has kind of a double cable. See that? But taking that stitch count and kind of filling with it a little bit, and again, like with this one, see how the, well, maybe you can't, you can feel it for sure, but it, it doesn't seem like this one is quite as snug as the first one. And I do have a, a bowl of corks that need tops. But I don't know how, I didn't want to fiddle with it all that much. So I just made them and then put them on. So I think I am going to hot glue. I think I'm going to hot glue. So I made a bunch of them. So there's two different patterns. There's this cable and then there's the other cable. But I decided to kind of fiddle with it a little bit. And I made one that has ribbing. And I just took the same numbers and I did ribbing instead. And then when we did the decreases in the cables, I just did... Knit, knit two. I did um, knit two together on the knits so that the knit stayed up at the top there. And then see how I added the beads at the top here? So that's why all of these have still the strings on the top because I think I need to go to the bead shop. These are just beads I had sitting around in my house, but I think I need to go to the craft store and see if they have like stackable beads where one bead would be a little bigger and then the smaller one would come. You know, you could stack them, the biggest bead and then the smaller bead and the smaller bead or star-shaped beads, or just star-shaped bead at the top, or maybe no beads, which are also fine, but I am I I am the worst. I love beads. So I thought I would do some with some beads and some without. So I did this, this one with ribbing, and then I did this one, which is just a garter. And this one ended up being a little bit more, I don't know, it's less Charlie Brownish and more like short and puppy so and this is a champagne cork see that so I didn't want to put it in this because it would really stretch out to put it over top of that or did I have it on that no I did it would have to really stretch out so I put it on this side same thing though I'm going to do the I think I'm going to put a little stuffing in these actually because see how they they maintain their shape but I think because they're knitted at a pretty tight gauge this is I think a, a DK weight gauge and I used a in this I have twos, threes, and fours here that I'm using. Yeah, twos, threes, and fours. So I don't know which needle size I use. I just kind of picked one up and then just started using them. So this is a little bit chunky. And while it does hold its shape, I feel like a little stuffing might be a good idea. So I might try stuffing one and see what happens. But I made this one too. So I made a bunch of them. I, I so far have looked at I made a bunch. Because, you know... How I get. And here's the worst part. I don't even know if I can put them all in one hand. Let's see. I cannot, but look, I have this one. So I'm not sure yet if they're going to be little ornaments. Wait, see this one I, 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 okay. With this one, I was able to get the beads on, and then I'd have to tuck this in, but I left this loop so you could hang it like a Christmas tree ornament. So with this one, I put the beads on here, and then I made a loop and a little knot so that the beads wouldn't come off, and then I could just tuck that tail in. So I can't decide if they should be ornaments or if they should just line up on the mantle. And 
I can tell you that I'm probably not done with it. And to make it easy, I did this. So inside this bowl are all my little, oh look, there's another one I didn't show you. In this bowl are all my green yarns, all different weights, and they're just all in here waiting to be knit into a little forest. And then I even have my three needle sizes in here so that I can just pick one and go. So I have a feeling that there's a few more in my future. I did not write up the directions for the two kinds that I modified, but maybe I'll do that and put it on my Ravelry page. So check back if that's interesting to you. I do believe that's it. All I have are those little trees, my sock and this sweater. And at the moment, like right the second, I actually have nothing on the needles. So I didn't even cast on the second sock yet for my sock. So if I wanted to knit like a couple stitches today, I could not do that. So I definitely need to fix that. So I have a lot to do, I guess. I got to get, get going on that. I have not done any planning for Christmas knitting. I have two projects I would like to do. I have a third that I maybe will do. And I, I'm not putting that pressure on me because remember, I'm excited about the Advent socks by Remember This Is Pottery. And I assume those are going to be coming out in time for that. Probably some, my guess is sometime maybe around Thanksgiving. So you have time to plan, get all your stuff ready because Advent starts December 1st. So it kind of feels interesting to me. I don't, at the moment, I don't feel a great deal of pressure to knit a lot of gifts and that feels good to me. So I don't know how you're managing your holidays this year. And I don't know if COVID has anything to do with how that's going for you, but I hope that you don't stress yourself out by making too many gifts. So let that be a blessing to you. I wanted to end with two things. I've been thinking a lot about one thing that I'm enjoying and one thing that I'm looking forward to. So one thing that I'm enjoying sourdough. I recently got a sourdough starter and I've been kind of fuddling around with it a little bit and I may have, I don't know even, let's not talk about it, but basically I'm making sourdough about every other day and what I really am enjoying is I learned how to make crumpets so that if the queen should ever stop by my house, I know exactly what I'm going to make for her and I know that I can do it really well and let me just tell you friends, if you have sourdough starter, crumpets, take no time and no effort. They are super easy, super quick. The reason that they're hard, the thing that makes them hard is that you have to have the sourdough starter. Otherwise it's not. And you use the discard. So whatever you normally would dump out, no ma'am, save that, turn it into crumpets. I got my recipe from the King Arthur flour website. Love it. I have had a hard time finding bread flour here. So the kingarthurflour.com did. And I now have some, because that flour eats a lot of, that starter, it has to be fed every day. It's almost like a pet. So there's that. So that's one thing that I've been enjoying. And one thing I'm looking forward to, I'm kind of looking forward, I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving. I'm looking forward to, the other day, we, our older daughter is home from college. She's mostly online, so she's been home a lot. So the other day we had the most wonderful thing. She was making this like meat and rice meal that she really loves. And I was making a salad and Mr. was making cocktails and it felt very festive and fun. And we were listening to Charlie Brown holidays, which is like a Thanksgiving on our Alexa music. It was Vince Garaldi and it was, you know, jazzy and festive and it felt fallish. And I, I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving now because I hope that we can continue to foster that kind of togetherness in the kitchen that I have always dreamed of, but has never, I've never had at our house up till, with the exception of desserts, most of the cooking is a singular <laughs> endeavor. So there's that. So anyway, I'm hoping wonderful things for all of you. And be sure to tell me what you're looking forward to and what you're enjoying because it's good for all of us to continue to make those connections, especially now, right? So have a great day. Thanks. See you next time.